We sold the big house and before any of the kids decided to move home, there is no home. We live in a van, there's only room for two. We're excited to share Last Resort with you, a little bit about how we built it and a little bit about what it does. This is built on a 144 4x4 chassis. We didn't want to look like an RV. We wanted to kind of be able to be in a city or be out in the boondock somewhere and still have everything we needed, but not look like there's somebody living in that van. In this case, Stealth includes not having windows. It includes not having any cutouts on the side. One capability is off the grid. We do that with uh, a, a very well-designed, well-programmed, well-monitored lithium battery system. There's uh, no solar, no solar necessary uh, because there's, uh, I think, about 10,000 watts of stored battery capacity and high current recharging capability. The other thing we do off the grid is we maximize tank capability. Our tanks, I think on this one, are almost 40 gallons. On a, a 144, that's amazing for fresh water capacity. So off the grid is power and water, and then four seasons. It has insulated compartments for the tanks. It has heated tanks, it has heated batteries. Last Resort started with a client vision, and uh, that vision was shared with our craftspeople. But during the process of the build, we found things in order to meet the client's objective that had to be shifted a little bit or redesigned a little bit. And the result, everybody thinks is amazing. It was funny, so when we arrived, we had our thoughts. You know, like we had, you know, the SketchUp model and we knew what, exactly what we wanted. Uh, and we, we were scratching our heads like, how is this possibly gonna take two and a half to three days to go through and configure? And then when we sat down with Brittany, we realized like everything is discussed and decided. Here I'm standing by the board of laminates and there's a lot of materials to pick. So upholstery is working with curtains, which they don't have side curtains because they chose not to do windows on this van, but they're still gonna be making a bulkhead privacy curtain from the front. But cabinet laminates during the configuration process, we've picked materials um, to get the feel that they wanted to in the end result. So the laminate traces to flooring traces, there's rubber flooring, there's more durable materials, there's vinyl flooring to choose from, then the upholstery for the beds. In their case, they ended up going with the indoor-outdoor umbrella material. Some people will use real leather or ultra leather. Vinyl is an option too, but that doesn't always breathe as well. To countertops, so once you get the layout solidified, we spend a lot of time going through and making the finishes just right. Outside looking in, you don't realize how very specific you can be about what you want, um, but you can. Brittany goes through with the client that's called the configurator, and basically it's a 50-page document of everything, every desire that the, the client has for their van. We go from that to a rough layout design where Rob, he lays out a rough schematic of what the, the layout of the van is going to be. And you think about all the systems, they're the same systems that are in a big house. It just happens to be in 80 square feet now. And so you're down to the 16th of an inch of where things fit and what you want. It starts to put dimensions to things as opposed to it just being a document that has words in it. And then from that point, you use a combination of the configurator details because it's so detailed with the layout configuration that Rob does. Combine those, study them, get to know them. And then from that, I create these 2D hand renderings of what the real layout of the van would be. Even down to the outlets and the plugs, you should be able to zoom in, be like, yeah, oh, there's a plug there, that's great. I sometimes say that I'm a, I'm a vessel for people because all I do is I take what's inside of your head and I try to show you what your ideas look like. We brought our ideas and now you see it returned to you as a more of a finished plan. We studied it and tried to see and make sure it was everything we wanted it to be. After the client does their configuration, we go through our design meetings. It's almost a plausibility check of can we build this? Can we meet the design criteria that the client has specced? And 99% of the time we do, um, but there are some things that we need to change from time to time in order to make it um, 
to make it more buildable, but also to make it more reliable for the client, things that they may not notice. A lot of folks want the benefits of a 170 crammed into a 144. How do you solve the problem of sleeping in a 144? So the way we solved it, we said, okay, well, let's put an L-shaped galley in and the end of the bed will flip up over itself. So when we're cooking, it's great. We wanted to keep the bed deployed because we didn't want to make a bed every night. So it was an easy way to transition between cooking and sleeping. It's challenging. I mean, there's a lot of hurdles that we have to jump through to make a lot of that stuff fit. And once the van gets here, we kick off the build process and we put all that hard work and forethought into, into action. This is pre-cab. So pre-cab is the first production station when the chassis come in from Mercedes-Benz. Chassis here, Charlie. We start by dismantling the whole interior. We cut big holes in your roof uh, and other parts of the body for the accessories that we add, such as AC, max fan, guy lights. We put down sound deadening. We put in insulation. We put a subfloor down. We put a finished floor down. We hang all the pre-made wiring harnesses and add extra wires for accessories. We do some pre-plumbing and pre-cab. Basically everything that needs done before it goes to cabinets. Last Resort's about ready to move to cabinets. It has a finished floor in it. It has insulation. All the sound endings already installed. Almost all the wiring's installed. We have a air conditioner, a max fan. This unit has a customer supplied hatch. Uh, we had to make a special adapter ring in-house that was CNC'd to adapt it to the ribbed roof. Everything went according to plan, water tested it just to ensure that it was nice and tight. And here we go, all in, latches how it's supposed to. One of the steps taking place in pre-cab by the finishing station is this will all be wrapped, which is abnormal to us. Usually we have panels and stuff, but since this is all going to be visible, Finishing is taking their time and filling some of this stuff so that way when this is wrapped, it's all gonna be nice and smooth finished product. There's a lot of factory recesses in these deep fillers. So before we wrap it with our materials, just to give it a nicer finish, we smooth out all the bumps. So as you can see here, the finished floor is down and protected. Uh, one of the things that customers don't get to see behind the scenes is the amount of prep work that goes before the finished floor is installed. We sound deaden, aluminum backing material is applied to the floor. We have a three quarter subfloor that's screwed down. We fill all the screw heads to make sure the floor is perfectly flat before we lay our finished flooring down. It gives uh, just the best finished appearance. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything sinking uh, after a lot of uh, wear and tear, it stays perfectly flat for the life of the van. Since this customer chose not to have any windows in his van, we took extra time to put sound deadening in behind all this, uh, just because that's a large panel and we don't want any vibrations. Uh, we put thin insulate insulation in uh, this just to you know help. That's again, that's a big panel. Don't want the heat coming in through there or the heat, uh, cold air escaping from the AC running, and then we vapor barrier. We insulate the heck out of these. This one has about an R7 and a half. In the case of Last Resort, we were able to increase the R value by about 25%, and we'll actually take that into other vans. The other thing we were able to do in Last Resort was pull the insulation through the enclosed, some of the enclosed structural parts of the van itself. So all these details uh, provide a better four season operation. So we just got some more wiring to do on this one, finish the wiring harnesses. Then we'll do a post production checklist for pre-cab. Someone will double check to make sure everything is there. And then it will go over to the cabinet shop. We're getting toward the end of the cabinet installation, but the process here has been one almost of continuous design. And uh, as I've watched Adam do this, this is one of the most challenging builds uh, that we've done. And I wanted to ask Adam, first of all, what's in this one little kitchen cabinet here that, that's an L shape that actually connects to the bathroom? The galley integrates uh, the sink, the heater core like usual. 
There's also ventilation for the electronics in the back. A myriad of plumbing and electronics all kind of converge in this cabinet. There's also a tilt down counter, which we've done before, but in this case, the opening is smaller than the counter itself. Being that it's L-shaped and it is a 144, it's very challenging to try to get everything packed into a small package. And that's really what's going on here. A lot of things are coming together and the more cabinets we set, the smaller the van gets. Did you have to go back and, and rebuild or refit any of this as you built it? Pretty much all of it. We have a basic set of dimensions for all the appliances and everything that needs to, you know, hard and fast dimensions that need to fit. Uh, but as you're going, there's always things that you have to account for, integrate and adjust along the way. Uh, so, so far it's going pretty well. Everything seems to be fitting. Tell me about the coffee pot. Uh, well, it's a, it's a really nice unit actually. It's a espresso maker, cappuccino machine. It's got a steamer arm on it. We discovered that the steam arm swings out and would hit the back of the door. Consequently, you wouldn't be able to use it. So we now put the pull out on a swivel. So you can actually pull the whole unit out, swivel the coffee pot in any, any direction you want so that you can use its full function and then slide it right back in where it belongs. Uh, and then you wouldn't even know it's there. I mean, you know, once it's tucked away, everything in here is going to fit with <laughs> a very, very tight tolerance. What are the tolerances on the coffee pot? Well, the coffee pot is six and three quarters. The opening it has to fit in is seven and a half. Over top of the coffee pot, after all of this rig is enclosed, I'm, I'm hoping to get about three sixteenths of an inch of clearance. Everything has just the right amount of clearance around it to accommodate the hardware associated with its pullout or with its mounting bracket. The client wanted a Cuisinart steam convection cook oven. So in our finished department, Alex took this out, put it on a table and operated it to see how much steam would come out because this compartment that it goes into, we were concerned that if it's put away hot or if they, for some reason they start to operate it without uh, pulling it out, which the uh, idea is to pull it out and operate it, that it could create a problem with the cabinet. So. Our solution, uh, and this is kind of a little bit of design on the fly, our solution was to uh, align the uh, compartment here with aluminum, uh, and then uh, it's all caulked all the way around to seal it up. Uh, another thing that happened here, there's a latch to keep it from sliding out, but that latch had a little bit of tolerance on it. Uh, we did coat the latch to take some of the tolerance out, there still was a possibility that this could rattle a little bit. So we took it back apart and we put magnetic uh, latches on the back. And so once it's set, you still have the safety latch, but there's no, there's absolutely no rattles that can come from this thing. So these are details that uh, take time, but uh, our guys, uh, it doesn't wait for an inspection for somebody to say, hey, wait a minute, what if this gets put away hot? The guys figure this out as we go. There's an L-shaped counter that runs all the way into the bathroom. There's a drawer directly underneath that, and underneath that is an open cabinet. There'll be a flip-up backsplash on the L-shaped counter portion. It'll flip down, the cushion will flip over, and then the mattress then becomes a little more than a foot longer. All the cabinetry and all the outside corners in this camper are a quarter round edge or a softer edge. There are some pretty tight corners in there, so we try to eliminate any hard edges. How did you match the quarter round? It looks like the finish is uh, identical to the laminate. How did you? Well, you just play with uh, a number of different colors, and I, I mix custom dyes and things and stains. We've successfully matched pretty much any laminate that we come across. I've known Adam for, I don't know, 20, 25 Long years. Long time. He's an artist. He's literally amazing, and uh, the stuff that he does is I know you're, Thank you. it's, it's phenomenal. So we don't consider anything we're doing fancy. We consider it elegant and elegance is simplicity and simplicity is structural uh, integrity, uh, not rattling the right materials and things that fit together and are functional. And these guys, Adam and everybody is thinking way beyond getting something built that looks nice. When we finished Last Resort, two people go out on our, you're not going to believe this, but in Cleveland we have some rough roads. So they go out on the rough roads at different speeds, 
and listen for any rattles. This thing is tight as a drum. There are no rattles in it. That's pretty amazing when you think that we have a, an arm pull out for the monitor. Uh, that was not designed necessarily for motorhomes, so we had to modify it, put some magnetic stops in there to make sure that it was tight while you're driving so you're not hearing any banging around. The bathroom door uses latches designed for airplane bathroom doors, so it's tight and it's, it's expensive, but it, it's, it's amazing how aggravating a rattle can be. We use a valence battery system. It's a little over 800 amp hours of battery. It's a lithium ion system, I should say. Uh, also, we use a 3000 watt Xantrax inverter, which is plenty of power for anything that coach needs. The batteries we have inside on a 144, so they're in relatively conditioned air at all times. Uh, in the wintertime, they stay warm with the van on. In the summertime, they stay cool with ventilation and the AC on and all of that's monitored by the uh, Silverleaf system. There's a lot of technology in the van. Some of it was client provided. Some of it was standard stuff we use, like the uh, Apple TV, Wi-Fi Ranger. That's pretty par for the course on our builds. Uh, the client provided us with a mini computer, which was the first time I've ever seen a computer that small, and an ultra widescreen monitor, which are integrated into his cameras that are mounted on the roof rack, custom roof rack. We wanted to have external cameras on it that were connected when we have either cell coverage or Wi-Fi coverage. So, hey, what's going on in our van? We're having dinner somewhere in the city and we could log in and look and say, oh, everything's good. Oh, look at those people come by and take a look and they're looking at what's going on. If you're not gonna have windows in the van and something goes bump in the night, you wanna see what's going on. And so the roof rack was a place to mount the cameras, but it was also extra space. So we envision having a rooftop deck that we can, when it's nice and we're in a beautiful place, set up some chairs and get some drinks and just sit in the sun and enjoy uh, our place. We didn't want to have a ladder. We had this elevated bed and had some experience sailing. So we said, oh, well, let's put a marine hatch. Hi, uh, my name is John Flick and I'm the uh, engineer at Advanced RV and uh, I do a lot of the mechanical design for the uh, custom motorhomes that come through. Um, anything that's special or out of the ordinary or uh, not really uh, our standard production uh, falls on my uh, department. This roof rack is one of the uh, items that I had designed for a customer. I've got 25 years in uh, automated equipment, machine design. I'm an avid off-roader and a camper. So when it comes to roof racks, I've had vehicles that have had roof racks. I've driven across the country and I know uh, what is uh, some of the useful features and things that should be designed into those, uh, into this particular roof rack and other things. The customer had a, a well-defined idea of what he wanted in this roof rack and they had given me a SketchUp model. At Advanced RV, we use uh, SolidWorks. SolidWorks is, a, is an industry standard uh, 3D design tool. This is the roof rack. Uh, they provided us with an overall uh, length and a width and they said that, you know, they wanted to have uh, cameras on the forward and the rear and the sides and they also wanted to have some lighting, some LED lighting. And then my job was to lay out the design of the roof rack so I would make some sketches and then uh, I would transfer that to actually creating the solid model that you see in front of you right here. With our levelers down this becomes a really stable platform so you could have multiple people and you could enjoy a sporting event or just the outdoors uh, on top of the rack. Normally a roof rack you see is uh, rounded tubes and they're bent, they're mandrel bent. But this particular roof rack is inch and a quarter uh, square aluminum tubing and it's got an eighth inch thick uh, perforated metal deck on it. And the whole construction is welded and there's also rivets that hold the top, uh, the top deck on along with aluminum welding. We have clearance for our air conditioning and our high powered max fan and we also have an additional uh, removable hatch where we can get to all of our electronics. The design was very, very well thought out. It was made to be easily manufacturable, yet something that would go on the van and it could be removed for service too, if necessary. And I really like this hatch. Uh, it's made for uh, you know, uh, saltwater uh, boating environments out in the ocean. And it actually is a really nice size. And you can see that it was able to, to come right out of the roof rack very easy, or come onto the roof rack very easily. And I'm gonna go back down now, so. Thanks, John. You're welcome. This is a uh, standard 40-gallon uh, tank that we use in our 170 builds. 
we modify it to go ahead and fit the 144 uh, wheelbase and it goes down to I think 34 gallons at that time. The gray tank is 25 gallons and the black tank is uh, 12. The 144s, it's always a different floor plan. So then what we do now is uh, actually spin weld the, uh, the fittings into the tanks where I need the drains to go, depending on where they're at. This customer asked to go ahead and have heated tanks. Uh, there's a heating pad up underneath this insulation uh, portion here which we just partially insulate that to go ahead and keep some of the heat in. On this side of the tank, once it's installed, our glycol system, uh, so it's a continuous loop actually in the S-bar system for the heating and the, uh, the hot water. And it'll actually come through the tank. It notched out here. We try to keep everything you know, contained and concealed uh, so you can't go ahead and see anything outside little utility center here which is all custom made you know in-house the nerf bars dave which does our welding he makes these little containers you know that are basically inside the nerf bar away from the elements and here you have led lights for you know uh, nighttime uh, usage city water inlet to go ahead and fill your uh, fresh water tank this customer actually has a compressor on board so he has dual uh, receptacles on both sides you know for anything you know that you want to use outside airing up your tires you know while you're uh, you're underway out on the road switch for your macerator the valves are up under here for your your dump valves so you just pull those out and dump you know the appropriate tank that you want to dump raw sewage hoses you know contained in here also and then it does have adequate space that you can go ahead and stow stuff it has an outside uh, shower assembly on that side specifically these vehicles the 144s you know we try to encapsulate the gray and the black tank the tank I have heaters on them. Uh, the fresh tank is still open air, but it is insulated and the glycol line does run through this box also, making you know, the continual loop. So that we use that heat too, uh, to heat this compartment. Down the road in the build, he suggested that he wanted to put a, a foot pump in. You know, not a full bathroom, but it has a toilet in it, a shower, it has you know fold out extendable uh, shower assembly where you can go ahead and close the bottom door. It gives you a little bit more room to you know maneuver around in there while taking a shower. Uh, custom teak flooring. So it really turns out you know I think really beautiful after you know we're done with it. First and foremost, I have to say amazing job to the owners for picking out the materials that they've done. It's come together beautifully in a smaller space. It's neutral yet warm and modern at the same time. I am touching the Sunbrella fabric. Um, it's complemented by a softer wall. Um, the material has a little feeling of grain to it. Just all fits so well together. My name is Alex. Uh, I help coordinate in the finishing department. We are the guys that make the van look good. So we do covered wall panels that you see here, the decorative coverings. We did this garage area here. Um, it's a lawn seal flooring product. It has a diamond plate pattern on it, uh, which was extremely difficult to install for us only because I wanted to make sure that the pattern across the entire deck, there's six or seven different pieces on this deck lid. I was very nervous about the pattern not matching across all of those pieces. The diamond plate pattern was actually laid across this entire surface as one gigantic piece. Uh, we then had custom templates that we made to the flooring to come back so that we knew exactly where the small gaps between the access doors were, cut them back, flush trimmed everything to make it look pretty. This entire diamond plate section in here is what we refer to as the garage in a 144. We put the ACDC inverters, the electrical panel, the entire battery pack is in this section right here. It seems like each van that ARV does kind of builds the body of knowledge and improves over time. We had the uh, opportunity to come visit at ARV Fest. And so when we saw Maverick, the question was, well, this is how we did battery deployment with a platform bed. We put them in between the wheel wells and you have this garage area. Will that work for you? Rob asked us and we said, yeah, that's, that, that looks great. So we have this big 
area, all the technology is underneath it, uh, and the bed is above it. So we took that solution from Maverick and it became part of Last Resort. It's a lot harder to design access for all of the things that are built in here. All the batteries, electrical systems are down here. All the electronics for the client are there. There are some things we have to think about to do that well. And one thing is we have to think about how we're going to cool electronics. So we bring air through a vent in the front and a vent here. It goes down, it's ducted down into this compartment here, comes forward around the battery packs over here around the inverter and then is pulled out by a fan. That fan is thermostatically controlled. The other part of maintainability is access. This access is all the I.O. for the silver leaf. This cover over here provides access to the uh, inverter and some of the other electronics. All of these access lids have latching and magnets to hold them down in place. They're totally removable. Um, they do not rattle. So the client specified in their configuration this specific style of light valance with that specific chem metal covering on it. It is actually a bronze laminate with a stainless top layer. So when it's cut and you're actually looking at all of the edges, it adds a third dimension to the finish inside the van to have this very tiny bronze line that mirrors all the way around all of the uh, lighting balances. It's actually really nice. We now have developed a way to install all of our wall panels here with no fasteners being exposed whatsoever. I feel like in projects like these that have so many different aspects going on on the insides of them, you don't want any one specific thing to catch your eye or detract your attention from the overall project itself. Today's delivery day for Last Resort, it's always a thrill. We kind of put the van out in the middle. As it turned out, it's a beautifully crafted motorhome. Uh, the clients have seen photos and they're excited to be here today. Ah! It's beautiful. I mean, it's just, it's exquisite. The, the, the fit and finish in that van is uh, it's like a jewel box, like everything down to the 16th of an inch, every finish, you can just tell the pride that the craftsmen take in their work. It's just, it's evident. It's just it's so rewarding to, you know, hear that and they feel like the quality of the product is, you know, beyond what they could ever imagine. It's home. We have friends and family all over the country, so we actually think we're going to see them more now <laughs> than when we're just living in one place. I think life is about experiences, new experiences with the people that you love. If I had to sum it up in one sentence, and I think the last resort is the means to make that happen.